Hello everyone and welcome to another Sunday service with us here at SPSJ in Hereford. It's really great to have you joining us today. It's a beautiful day on the It's a beaut beautiful it weekend as well as many of you, isn't it? So um, I hope you've enjoying been enjoying the outdoors and the sunshine and we're in our shorts. We'll be heading off for a nice walk when we finish recording this and uh, yeah, hope uh, it's lovely, isn't it, to have this weather. Um, so hope you're enjoying it uh, wherever you are today. Well, tomorrow is a very special day. Well, for some it may be, some it might not. Yes. What are your feelings on it, Andy? Yeah, well, I mean, we just wanted to kind of say, really, yes, so uh, uh, we're, some people are calling it Freedom Day, aren't they? Some people are really angry even about tomorrow. And, a bit um, anxious, a bit, a bit nervous. anxious, a bit nervous. Excited. Um, I mean, who knows, to be honest. I mean, the kind of when we've recorded this, uh, who knows, maybe Boris has done a U-turn on some of the restrictions. I mean, that's kind of how weird things are at the moment, isn't it? Um, just don't know. And yeah, so we just thought we'd kind of start just by talking about that a little bit, really. Just saying, how are you feeling? How are you feeling about the easing of restrictions? tomorrow um, and just to say um, if you're not signing up to our weekly newsletters weekly emails um, then do because in there uh, I wrote just a little piece saying look we don't know still what that means for us as church and what we're going to be expected to do mm. still so um, so there's still loads of uncertainty around exactly what the easing restrictions means um, we know some places already saying public transport many may say actually no we're still going to insist on it mm. um, so so yeah so However you're feeling, um, we, we just kind of want to just uh, just say the start really, um, and our opening psalm really just speaks into kind of the whole range of how people might be feeling um, and offering us comfort and hope this On morning. this topic of that, I was just thinking there's a few people, quite a number of people I'm aware of in our church at the moment who are a bit poorly, feeling a bit low. Yeah, and, and not through, not just because of COVID. I mean, just, just other COVID, just things calling. happening at the moment. We are yeah. aware, and we are praying for you. Like Andy said, please do go on our website, and if you do need any prayer, we'd be happy. That performer would be happy to pray for you, and somebody from our prayer team would get in contact with you if you feel you need that extra support. Yeah. So should we start with our reading and then yeah, our prayer? Yeah, I'd say it's a great reading uh, that we have today that you'll be more than familiar with, I'm sure, and um, it's. Just a very timely one, I think, yeah. though, just to remind us. And it's Psalm 23. And it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you, you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So shall we just pray together as we worship our wonderful, amazing Lord? Father, we just thank you for this beautiful day, and wherever we may be, I just pray that you will just be with us as we worship you in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. And so... Our opening song just picks up on that reading this morning and um, and yeah and so just whatever you are whatever you're doing just however you're feeling about tomorrow just allow God to speak to you and refresh you as we join in singing this together. Separated, you're holding on to me. 
So what a wonderful song to be singing this morning as we do contemplate and think about those things which may be struggling with or things may be happening in our lives, that God restores us and God's got our back, as we say, and God is holding our hands through them. And I just hope and pray that over you this morning that you just feel God's comfort around you. And uh, Andy's going to read our next Bible reading. Yeah, which Ephesians. kind of picks up nicely, really, on some of the stuff we've been thinking about and, and God being with us and uh, why that is and, and what that means as well. So, yeah, so I'm just going to kind of pick up on this. And um, it's from Ephesians chapter 2 and it's verses 11 to 22. And it says, uh, Jew and Gentile reconciled through Christ. Therefore, remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised, by those who call themselves the circumcision, which is done by the body, uh, done in the body by human hands. Remember that at this time, that time, you were separated from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall, of hostility. By setting aside in, this, in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations, his purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace, and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away, and peace to those who were near, for through him we both have access to the Father by one Spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people, and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord, and in him, you too are be being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his Spirit. Mm. So we're now going to hear off um, Mary, our reader, and then we'll catch up with you a little bit later on. Yep, yeah, so after that there'll be a kind of time of worship to think and reflect and, and continue to just allow God to speak and, and minister to you where you are. So um, over to Mary and we shall see you later on. Well, good morning and uh, welcome to our study on the second book of the Ephesians series this morning. And I think the message is quite clear. We are one in Christ, so please can we all get on with each other? And I love this reading because it's unequivocal. Paul is a straight talker, isn't he? I don't think you can miss the message here. So let's take a closer look. I think Jewish practices and laws are really fascinating. Orthodox Judaism has always held a particular interest for me, although I truly cannot imagine being subject to those rules. However, they are very deep-rooted and have their origins and part of the covenant God made with Abraham. Now, in our reading, circumcision is mentioned and it is considered an act of obedience to God in Judaism. Just so, the eating and the food preparation rules. It's widely held now that these are cultural issues and not matters perhaps of hygiene or religion. But whatever the truth of this, these rules and practices serve to make one thing clear. The Jews are different to non-Jews, a race apart, the chosen ones. But here we have Paul, himself from a devout Jewish family, saying, no, this is now all past. We are all one. Those divisions no longer exist. And he says in verse 14, referring to Christ, for he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility. And of course, he's speaking of the hostility between Gentiles and Jews, but it's just as applicable today 
between different groups in our society. And how, may I ask, is this possible? Well, simply because Jesus came to join us and to die for us, to form a new covenant, a new promise, one that offers the whole world a place at the table. We are, through him, fellow citizens with God's people, members of his household, built upon the foundations of the apostles and the prophets, with Jesus himself as the cornerstone. This is a new today. Hallelujah. It's glorious words, isn't it? Absolutely glorious. A blueprint for world peace and harmony. And I think we need to remind ourselves that we do this not because it's a good thing to do, not because tolerance is a politically correct thing to do, but because it's a deeply scriptural and required by God of each and every one of us. And we do it for that reason. Now, thinking about these words in the context of recent events, the appalling behaviour in the aftermath of the UEFA Cup final last weekend, the need for love, tolerance and harmony seems to me more pressing than ever. The phrase from hero to zero came to mind after those dreaded penalties. But you know who knows more about that than any person alive? It's Christ himself, isn't it? The adulation of Palm Sunday to the crucifixion at the crowd's behest just a few short days later. So what is it with us humans that we are happy to scapegoat those who we perceive as different to ourselves? After all, the range of potential differences is huge, isn't it? We have race, culture, religion, Disability, sexuality, gender, I could continue, the list goes on and on. And truly, no one is exempt from those categories. But Paul is making it completely clear. No one, but no one, is excluded from the grace and love of God. And perhaps it's a timely reminder to all of us that that statement includes people from our own churches, and if we were to try and exclude them, either deliberately or passively, by not welcoming and including them in our attitude to strangers and visitors and what we think they may represent. It's all about perception, really, isn't it? I read a wonderful quote recently which said that, as Christians, we are here to share the good news, not to become the bouncers for entrance to club heaven, I really like that. We really need to remember our place in all this. We are here to serve in Christ's name. So where do all these boundaries come from? Well, one possibility is that we are seeing people very much through our own eyes, not through God's eyes. And I invite you to really contemplate that. How do you think God sees this? Let's be honest. It is so much easier to show love to those people we like, with the people who agree with us. And yet these verses in Ephesians make it more than clear. The offer is for all. The good, the bad, the unusual. All are redeemed by the blood of Christ. He died for all of us, not just the ones who match our own stereotypes. So what effect do you think Paul's words would have had on the Ephesians? Well, we know that Paul spent two or more years ministering in Ephesus, and during that time, many were converted to Christianity. This did not please the silversmiths, whose living depended on them making idols for the great temple to the Greek goddess Artemis. In fact, it caused a near riot, and Paul was forced to flee the city. Paul's words were radical, inflammatory even, and once business was affected, some wanted him gone. But under his ministry, the early church was established and grew in Ephesus. And we know that Paul continued to preach the good news. And I think it's good at this point to remind ourselves of that wonderful quote in Galatians 3. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is the male or female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. It says it all really, doesn't it? Absolutely Everyone is welcome and loved. 
So what effect do you think will the actions of those in Manchester this week who showed their support to Marcus Rashford and others, what effect will that have? Well, one can only hope that this is the beginning of a more tolerant and kind time. Rashford is himself a Christian, so I think it would be good to have his take on this. And I know, having read some quotes from him, how humbled he was and brought to tears by the love and support his community showed him. But I think we also know what Paul would say. He would say, in Christ, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple of the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. Wow. So let us, this coming week, work on remembering this amazing verse and prayerfully think about how we can alter our vision of those around us in this world to try again to see them as God sees them, with love, with grace and with forgiveness that we all need daily ourselves and surely must accord to others as well. So let us pray. Creator God, you made us all in your image. May we discern you in all that we see and serve you in all that we do. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. this solid rock to which we can turn and it was um it was lovely to hear that 
song again uh, that Sofiana recorded especially for us here at SBSJ uh, back last year and uh, thank you Mary for those words as well it's just you know that it, it's exciting really isn't it we, we can join together to be the, the dwelling place of God that the God's spirit lives within us and we can have that peace as a result and uh, and we can we can cry out to God God will hear us God is with us God comforts us and yeah and and we can offer that same to others then as well as a result that God works through us which is really exciting and a privilege as well to be able to do that as Christian and as, as and as believers yeah. all fighting for the same cause and, and that idea of one humanity as well and um, you know we, we we put it kind of out on our Facebook our response to the just horrendous tweets um, that were directed at, at Rashford's mm-hmm. um, at Saka and um, who's the other one? Uh, Sancho mm-hmm. and just just yeah the, we, we just want to kind of reiterate other people's comments really that you know for us there is absolutely no place for racism mm-hmm. we are all made in the image of God we're all loved by God mm-hmm. and we're all one humanity and um, it's just awful mm-hmm. what they were subjected to um, and yeah and so we just wanted to kind of make that clear as well, um, where we stand as, as a church on that. And we don't tolerate it. We no. want that happy. Um, and we're really proud, actually, that yeah. you know we have uh, diverse diversity church. within our church. Yeah. You know, in our people schools. from different nations and in our schools as well. We have one of the, the, the well, I think it's the most diverse school in Herefordshire, and um, yeah, and we're proud of that. And we, we love learning from each other. So um, yeah. Great. What a privilege. To share that. So notices. Notices, yeah. What's going on? Like always, on? sign up to our news sheet. Everything's yeah. on there. It's all on there. Definitely. It's going on because there's lots going on. Um, so so go on there, and uh, we're we're kind of let's say we're trying to work out our plans for the future, uh, which always become difficult. Um, you know, as Claire mentioned earlier, we've got uh, various things going on. People not being well, but also some people being pinged to self isolate mm. as well. Um, and yeah, so things that just remain complicated and tricky but we are continuing to plan as we can. Try to juggle our life and things might have to change and things Oh things undoubtedly rotors are changing all the time um, at the moment, yeah. Just bear with us and just pray for us as a team and as a leadership as we try and figure this exciting time out, she says with great attitude. I'm not sure if we announced it last week, but um, I'm sure they won't mind. We announced it at our ten thirty service. I am not not pregnant. I don't know why you even mentioned I it. I know, again. But, but I had to because the rumour went round. But anyway, Die Hardwick um, from our 11, 10 30 series at St James got engaged to Paul, which is very excited. Yeah. And, um, so, congratulations. Congratulations. Um, and actually, we didn't mention it online last week. We said we were going to announce it later on Facebook because there were still some, th- some slight things we had to work through at the time of recording for last week's online service. But yes, if you missed it, we announced our children and families worker last week. Uh, so, uh, lots of exciting news. And later on Facebook, yeah. we did as well. So, so yeah. um, the team is nearly complete. It's very exciting. They're looking for a head of operations. If you know anybody who's interested in head of operations, I think the details are still on our website. website Check it out or contact um, Andy, and uh, I'm sure you'll be able to give you some info on that. Um, Yeah. So that's it. So, um, yeah, we hope you've enjoyed our time together today, and uh, we're just going to close with one more song, uh, rather apt with everything we're thinking about and God ministering to us and to kind of uh, send us out to, to. to, to be God's presence out in the world. Uh, this wonderful song, O Church Arise. And have a fab week, whatever you may be doing, and keep safe and well. Take care all.